race to replace Ileana Ross Layton got a jolt recently when Donna Shalala announced she was running. Shalala's supporters hope the former U.M. president's entry would shake up the field and get some of the other candidates to drop out. But so far, that has not happened. And our next guest says she is in the race to stay, and we'll ask her now. Mary Barzi Flores is a former judge. She has the backing of Emily's List and has been in the race for close to a year now. Is, it, is that about right? About close to a year? Since last summer. Since last summer. So we're coming up on a year. And am I right? Uh, are you intimidated by Donna Shaleo? And will you be running out or staying in the race? I'm staying in. Why? Absolutely. Um, I'm in this. I'm in this race uh, to win it. And. Uh, my campaign isn't changing one bit uh, with Donna Shalala getting in. So does it change your strategy at all as to how you run to have somebody with such large name recognition, somebody who has the ability to raise a great deal of money suddenly gets in the race. Most folks like myself see her as the front runner automatically. Does that change your strategy at all? It doesn't change my strategy at all, Jim. Uh, I'm. I'm raising money, uh, I'm meeting folks, and everywhere I go, I, I hear from people in this district that uh, what everyone wants on our side of the aisle um, are fresh faces, bold progressive leadership that's gonna take us and this country forward. Now, you've taken some shots at Shalala, questioning her democratic bona fides when it comes to issues like uh, the land sale that the University of Miami was involved in, to Walmart, to, you know, in, in an area that was sort of protected, uh, the UM janitor strike. Do you think these are issues that are going to be relevant in the campaign? I wouldn't call it taking shots, Tim. Um, I think that with Donna Shalala and me in this race, this is going to be a contest between two stark differences in values. And I think the voters are going to see that pretty, pretty easy. So describe that to me. What, are, what do you see the differences being? So I grew up in this community. I was born at Jackson. I grew up a couple blocks from the Flagler dog track. I graduated from Gables High, the same ki uh, school my kids went to. Um, my dad was a manager of a fish and tackle shop. I'll give you a little bit of background. And I, um, around, when I was around 10 or 11 years old, 11, 12, he had some health challenges that made it hard for him to keep his job. And he lost his job. And when he lost his job, he lost his health care. And he got sicker and we got poorer. Jim, I was just a kid, but even I could tell that almost overnight, my family went from solidly middle class to poor. Within two years, he had died. Left my mom with three kids with no life insurance, no savings, and I had to get my first job, which was washing dishes at the Pizza Hut right on Lejeune Road on the way to the airport. I've, I worked for hourly wages for close to 10 years before I was ever a lawyer. I know what it's like to work hard for near poverty wages for tips that aren't guaranteed i've been a dishwasher a line cook a maid a waitress a bartender a freelance musician and you think donna shalala can relate to those things when donna shalala had the chance to stand up for hourly workers as president of the university of miami and the janitors who were making six to seven bucks an hour just wanted a little bit more money health care and the right to organize she stood in their way she didn't fight for them the, the people in this district will know that I will fight for affordable health care for every single person that I'll fight for working families I'll fight for hourly workers I believe in universal health care. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Um, the Me Too movement, it's something that, that you've spoken about. You've shared some of your own experience and having to deal with that. When I had Donna Shalala on the show last week, I asked her about the Me Too movement. She says she's very impressed with it. But I also raised the question as to whether or not she's compromised because the, of her support went during the Bill Clinton scandal with Monica Lewinsky and the allegations from other women. Do you believe she's compromised? 
I think she's compromised on a number of core values, um, values that are core to Democrats and to Democratic voters. Certainly on, on health care, um, I believe she's compromised. I think people in this district want somebody who's willing to take on big insurance and not get cozy with it. When she left her post at uh, Health and Human Services, she went right on the board of uh, United Health, one of the largest uh, for-profit um, health insurers in the country. Uh, premiums were skyrocketing. She was compensated very well. Um, that's a, str a striking contrast in values. The environment that you mentioned before, that's another area that I believe she's compromised. When she was president of the University of Miami, um, the university owned a track of incredibly set environmentally sensitive land, um, acres of it over near the Metro Zoo. And she sold that land on the cheap to a developer to build a Walmart and a, and a Chili's and a parking lot. Um, the people in this district will know that I'll be a fighter for the environment. 